And now joining us live in the studio again is host of Facing South Florida, CBS 4's Jim DeFiti. So a lot to talk about, Jim. Mm -hmm. We just talked about Ted Cruz mm -hmm. and Marco Rubio. This is really a crowded field and more could be coming. So what do you expect to see in the coming months? It's, and it's important to remember, this is, a, this is a race that the first vote will not be cast until February. So we've still got a long way to go. But this was not the race Jeb Bush wanted to run. Jeb Bush did not want to run in a crowded field. He had hoped to run something much closer to what Hillary Clinton is experiencing, in that the establishment would galvanize behind him and he would have a clear path. Right now, Jeb Bush... I don't think you could call him the front runner. I think he is one of three top contenders. I think it's Jeb Bush, Marco Rubio, and Scott Walker. I think that's the elite class. And now the question becomes, who can make the case to Republican voters that they're the ones who should take on Hillary Clinton? Because that's what this is about. Whether it's education, immigration, or all the other issues that are, that are key taxes, or, you know, go down the line, Soviet Union and the, the ways that the United States military is being used around the world, all those issues the Republicans are going to sound very similar on. The one thing that's going to make them different is how they say they're going to run against Hillary. And he seemed to be acknowledging that in his speech. He mentioned her a couple of times addressing that issue. I'm sure there's more to come. All right, let's turn to the method of his message. Mm -hmm. He's going by Jeb. And you know him so well by that name, but for many of us, we think of him as a former Florida governor. So what is the reason behind this type of promotion? I think it's a little bit of nostalgia. Jeb was, he used this exact same logo back in 1994 when he first ran for governor. Of course, he lost that campaign, so he's hoping for a different outcome this time. But it's that notion of just being able to have the one word Jeb out there, although everyone knows he's a Bush. Yeah, so we want to turn back to my co-anchor, Rick. He is live at Miami-Dade College. Kendall campus and Rick you've covered politics for a long time as well so what does Jeb need to do to win this Republican nomination what are your thoughts well it all comes down to these early primaries and caucuses Erica and there are four of them that are very important vitally important and a lot of the Republicans that I've spoken to say that if Jeb Bush doesn't win at least one of them that his candidacy will end. So we're talking about Iowa, New Hampshire, South Carolina, and Nevada. These are the first four states where Republican voters will have a chance to come out and vote. Uh, he does not expect Jeb Bush to, to win in Iowa, but he does think, and his team thinks, that he can win in New Hampshire. It's a more moderate state, so he's hoping for a win in one of those first four, and then they're going to play the long game to try to get the nomination. All right, so Rick Folbaum and Jim DeFiti in the studio. Thank you, gentlemen, both of course and keep it tuned to CBS 4 News and CBSMiami.com for continuing coverage of Jeb Bush's big decision to run for president announcing that today there's much more on the announcement on the CBS Evening News with Scott Pelley following this newscast